What's going on guys? Alex here with TFL Bike and beside me, also Case. And today we have some pretty exciting sport bike news because we have an all new generation of the ultimate sport bike. That's right, Suzuki just announced their all new Hayabusa. It's a 2022 model year and it looks to be a pretty cool bike. Yeah, it's funny that you say that, Ultimate Sport Bike and all new, because there are a lot of very exciting high performance motorcycles out there that have come out since the Hayabusa was first launched. And honestly, this brand new Hayabusa compared to the older one, in a lot of ways, it's a little hard to tell the difference. So uh, I'm not sure they've done quite enough. And that's where I'm gonna say, no case, you are totally wrong. They've done plenty. This 2022 Hayabusa is the third generation. So the first generation went from 1997 to 2007. The second generation went from 2007 to 2021. And of course, those two generations, they even weren't that different from each other. Now this third generation is starting here in 2022 and Suzuki claims it's got 550 all new parts but I'm wondering if that's making enough of a difference because looking at it visually and looking at the performance figures, they're pretty similar. Yeah, we'll get to the performance figures in just a minute, but it's not a bad thing that this looks like the outgoing 2020 version of the Hayabusa. This is a bike that can go 185 miles per hour top speed, and you need really good aerodynamic properties to be able to go that fast and not get thrown off of the bike. The Hayabusa's always been really good. They've done their work in the wind tunnel, uh, so why change that up too much? They have a bike that goes through the wind really well, and they made it look a little more angular. It doesn't look so blobby and like it was made in the mid 2000s. So it looks like it was brought up to the modern era, uh, but it still has that classic Hayabusa look with that funky looking tail end. Um, yeah, and I think if they ventured too far away from that, this wouldn't be Hayabusa. It needs to have that old characteristic of looking like it can go 185 miles per hour and not feel any of it in the wind. Suzuki claims that the styling for this motorcycle is taken somewhat from the Peregrine Falcon, which is sort of this motorcycle's spirit animal, if you will. And uh, I still think it's a fairly odd looking bike. I will give you this, it's an iconic shape. It's something that is instantly recognizable, especially with the Hayabusa symbol on the side of it. It's not something that you're going to mix up with another bike when you look at it, but yeah, it looks a lot like the old model. It does, and again, that's not a bad thing, but when you are actually sitting on the bike and looking at the dash, you can really tell that this is an all new bike, and they did the same thing. The old Hayabusa has a very iconic kind of five round gauge setup uh, with these old school analog gauges and they didn't move too far away from that. You still have the standard five uh, circle design with your tachometer, speedometer, fuel gauge, temperatures, but you now have this color TFT display in the middle. Uh, shows you different things like your rider modes, traction control, ambient temp, but one of the coolest things is your lean angle. It will in real time show you your current lean angle, whether that's on a track or just, you know, spirited riding on the road and you can't argue that that is a super cool feature something you know not super practical but at least something fun to look at yeah. and not something you would have seen you know 10 years ago I will admit I would enjoy being able to see in real time my lean angle and to be fair there are a lot of new rider aids on the 2022 Hayabusa that you didn't get on the previous models yeah, let me ask you this. That previous uh, 2020 model, did it have traction control? No, it did not. Quick shifter? No. And the quick shifter on this one goes up and down. It's also adjustable. You can go between racing, conventional, or casual riding styles. I've never seen that before. Did it have cruise control? No, because it wasn't even ride by wire on the old model. Yeah, I think they added that in like 08, so they could have, but they didn't. So this one gets it, and it, uh, yeah, yours didn't have that if you're going for the 2020. Hill hold control? Nope. Did the 2020 have riding modes? It had three. Yeah. Which is better than nothing. Just three, I'll give you that. That's, you know, that's okay. But the new one has six and three of them are uh, user set. So you can actually adjust exactly how much the traction control or ABS is gonna kick in. And get this case, it is super advanced. You can actually adjust the power delivery. So uh, you can have full power, really aggressive throttle response, but full power output of the engine. You can have kind of a tamed down throttle response, but still using full power. And then you can have kind of like your rain mode, which is gonna be smoothed out throttle 
throttle response, but also not full power. So it's kind of kind of reduced things a little bit. You didn't have that on the 2020. Uh, you did have ABS, but not cornering ABS. So this new one gets cornering ABS. This new one also gets slope control. So if you're going downhill, it'll make sure that that rear wheel doesn't lift too much when you get on the brakes. And it actually has uh, combined brakes. So you pull that uh, front lever and it's gonna control both the front and the back, but you can't argue with that. There's so much tech loaded into this bike and you got none of it in the 2020 if you're going for the 2020 model. I do have to admit that is a lot more riding tech and it's probably a good thing that it has that much riding tech because the 2022 Hayabusa makes 187 horsepower and 110 pound feet of torque, which is a lot. However, the 2020 Hayabusa made an extra seven horsepower and an extra four pound feet of torque. So mostly because of Euro 5 compliance, the new Hayabusa actually makes less power, but they've done so much to this engine, it's actually faster from zero to 60. And that's largely because of improvements to the valve train. So now zero to 60 on the 2022 Hayabusa is 3.2 seconds versus 3.4 in the previous model. Now the engine is still a 1,340 cc inline four, and it has tons of new parts in it, revised cams, revised valve train, revised springs, cylinder head, rods, crank, the block, the clutch, the gearbox. And one of the biggest things that they've done, because of course, like I mentioned, it has less power. So you might be wondering, well, what did all these improvements do? One of the biggest things that they actually improved is the durability. So Suzuki claims there is 54% more oil being fed to the crankshaft. As well, the crankshaft connecting rods and pistons are more durable and they're lighter weight, which means you have less overall rotating mass, which causes less vibration. That also improves durability. And the revised valve train has increased lift on the exhaust side, which helps you apparently with your low to mid power. And that's part of the reason that it's zero to 60 is better, even though it's very most top end power is slightly less than the model that it replaces. The cam lobes and the valve springs have also been revised for better durability. And that's especially a good thing on the Hayabusa because there are a lot of people who put turbo kits on these motorcycles. So if you're one of those guys that is buying a motorcycle like this to do really intense modifications, like putting a turbo on it and trying to make five, 600 horsepower, then that in increased durability on the powertrain is probably going to be something worth considering. Yeah, I mean, you kind of made my argument for me. Euro 5 has been kind of making its way through all the motorcycle manufacturers recently, and they've been having to revise their engines to be able to keep selling in Europe. Kind of made the argument for me. The new one makes less power and uh, makes less torque as well, but it gets up to zero to 60 faster than the old model, thanks to all these changes. Again, like you said, never gonna complain about durability. It's always good to see that they're strengthening up the motor. And like you said, people are going to put extended swing arms on this bike they're going to put turbo kits on this bike so you want to know that the platform is built to be able to handle all of that just looking at the horsepower and torque numbers though doesn't tell the whole story because while this new 2022 busa makes less torque than the 2020 model if you actually look at the power graphs this makes more torque in the mid-range than the 2020 model and that's where you're going to be using most of your power on the street is in the mid-range you're not going to be you know wide open throttle all the time so as far as the street bike goes this is probably going to be more usable and uh, suit your everyday needs more than the outgoing model will. Now, I won't for a second deny that all of this durability, these redesigns that they've done to the engine are great. I'll, I'll admit that. But the thing is, I don't think these are the types of improvements that are going to bring people into a dealership because, again, some of the bikes that are coming out now just have crazy technology on them that really put them at the cutting edge and you know, 54% more oil flow to the crankshaft, a revised valve train, more mid-range power. It's just not that sexy. It's not that exciting. It's not what I would expect from the ultimate sport bike. Did you catch what he just said? He said, crazy technology that will get you into the dealership. Do I need to go through that list again? Traction control, quick shifter, cruise control. Oh, but what bike and now doesn't wheeling. have that? See, that's typical in all kinds of sport bikes. Really the cutting edge, fastest bikes that you can get now. Almost all of them have those features. I wanted to see 
this Hayabusa do something completely out of the box, and I'm just not seeing it. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, this isn't a groundbreaking motorcycle. It's not, you know, completely redone, but we didn't go through all the things on the list. So let's go to brakes for a second because this bike does have a fully revised front braking setup. Brembo Stylema front brake calipers. That's the same that comes off of the Ducati Panigale V4S. So super powerful brakes. That's clamped onto twin 310 millimeter discs and you get new Bridgestone S22 tires, which were specifically made for this Hayabusa. So good stopping power, good brakes. And then going into the suspension, fully reworked, fully adjustable KYB suspension front and rear. And Suzuki says that the internal settings have been changed to better absorb shock, which contributes to exceptional straight line stability. And this is definitely a bike you're gonna wanna go in a straight line very fast on. So good to see. Yeah, stability is definitely going to be important on the Hayabusa, maybe more so than almost any other bike on the market, again, considering what people do with them in the aftermarket. And some of that increased stability also comes from a slightly redesigned chassis. But still, I mean, better brakes, better suspension, that's awesome, but it's just not an exciting headline. I'm, I don't see it, you know? Yeah, so we do these Know You're Wrong videos a lot here at TFL, and uh, just because we're taking different sides on this doesn't necessarily mean that that's exactly what we think. So, you know, I'll be fair, I kind of agree with Case. <laughs> they, they didn't do quite enough. Um, I wanted something really crazy and you know we'll, we'll get to what this competes with in just a second but eighteen thousand five hundred and ninety nine dollars it's not a cheap motorcycle granted it's not the most expensive bike out there either um, at one point this was the ultimate sport bike and now there are in terms of price sport bikes that are much more ultimate than this one is um, but yeah, nowadays, if you want the ultimate sport bike, you're probably gonna go over to Kawasaki and look at something like the H2. Granted, that bike's $29,000, supercharged inline four cylinder, 197 horsepower, 101 pound feet of torque. Um, but I think both of us, when we heard that there was a new Hayabusa coming, were expecting something that would kind of dethrone the H2 and make room for a new era of the ultimate sport bike instead of you know just making the one that's been out for 20 years a little bit better do you, do you kind of agree with that yeah i have to say when when i initially saw this hayabusa come out and i was reading about it i thought man they really just haven't done that much with the bike to be 100 percent fair to suzuki and to this new hayabusa there are tons of improvements throughout the entire motorcycle. So it has been refined in almost every way that you could imagine. But like I've been saying, that's just not substantial enough to catch the eye of your average consumer. And something like the H2 with a supercharged engine, that's the kind of thing that gets people in, in the door wanting to look at this motorcycle. Those are the kinds of radical things that we would have loved to see on this, you know, factory forced induction, something to really make the bike stand out. Uh, but I think most people are going to struggle to really pick out the differences. Yeah, and like Case was saying, diehard Busa fans who have owned the first gen and the second gen, this will probably make them pretty happy. But for the people out there that just want the most badass motorcycle you can get, the H2 and even the ZH2, which is $1,100 cheaper than this Hayabusa and has a supercharger, so it makes all those crazy chirping noises and comes with chrome bodywork, which is that wow factor that people really want kind of seems like the better deal, and that's probably where I would take my money if I was shopping for the ultimate sport bike. Of course, all of that kind of comes down to what you're looking for out of a motorcycle, and I think we're getting to a point where there's sport bike nostalgia, which is a little unique to me, because usually in the past, sport bikes have been the most cutting edge types of things that you just don't see around, you know, crazy new technology that's never existed before, uh, and this is kind of a staple. It's, it's a pillar. It's a classic. It's something that people have seen for so long. It would be maybe a little weird for those diehard Hayabusa fans if it changed very dramatically at all. Maybe something almost like the G-Wagon, you know, if you were to dramatically redesign that truck, people would be upset. So. You know, it might be smart that Suzuki has stuck with this design and this general layout. We'll have to see how the sales end up over time. Uh, but part of me thinks that it's just not gonna bring that many people into the doors. 
Well, anyway, guys, there you have it. Let us know what your thoughts are on the new Hayabusa down in the comments below. Do you think they've done enough? Do you think this is gonna be a sales hit? Uh, or do you think that Kawasaki is gonna run away with all the bike sales in terms of the ultimate high-performance sport bike market? Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.